And then my overall goal, where I want to be, um, you know, is playing in the Super League, playing at the highest level, and hopefully getting um, a national team call up to to Spain. Staying on that topic of environment, do you have any advice for listeners who might be trying to pick a college, or they have options and and selecting the right one? Um, I would say like you don't need to go to a college that has like forty. 40 players on on the roster you know you need to go somewhere that even if it's not a big school um you want to ask the the teammates um or like say if you're going to college the people who are already there about the culture and how the environment is um if the staff actually cares and reaches out about you if they have things in place such as a um oh what's it called a not psychiatrist but a, a sports psychiatrist yeah mm-hmm. um say cuz if you do need that help that there are things in place that can help you mm-hmm. yeah absolutely so let's come to the now london city lionesses you guys are first in the table i think 10 or so matches to play but coming off a big win on the weekend since uh, the timestamp of recording this so what is the mindset like around the club in this this quest for promotion yeah, I think I think just uh taking things one game at a time. Um I've been here for this is my third season here and um a lot of the same players have been around and and we've created that culture that you know it's it's player led first. Um like cuz y- your manager and your staff can say and do anything you want to do but at the end of the day you're the ones on the pitch so you you're the ones that's got to put in the work. And, and get the results like obviously you have tactics and everything but it all comes down to your individual battles and how much you want it for the person next to you and so I think just yeah definitely taking it one game at a time and and being able to respond to adversity uh, when that comes wow. and you've been with the lions, lionesses now for a few seasons but this time things are, are clearly clicking in terms of results what does that come down to I think just honestly the culture we have and that we want to do it for each other and we put a lot of hard work and a lot of grit determination and because obviously we finished second last year and we knew that we could have done better Um, sometimes we drop points to games that we probably shouldn't have dropped points and I think now we know that what we're capable of and we know how much talent we have in this group so it's just putting all it's kind of just having all the puzzle pieces together now yeah that makes sense and we've you we've talked a little bit about the mentality aspects that have kind of grown in your game but in terms of on the field especially being in london i know there's some time in spain and stuff but where has your game gone in terms of what levels have you been able to to kind of increase yeah, I think um, obviously the the football culture here in, in America is a bit different. Um, mm-hmm. So I think um, kind of adapting adapting to that um, has demanded more. You got to be a lot better on the ball. So I I've definitely focused a lot on my you know both right right and left foot distribution, um, as well as like I've always been a good shot stopper. But there's so many other parts of the game that um, are more important. Uh, such as your distribution communication and then just making sure you're always switched on like ob- last year I made um a few mistakes and mm-hmm. um, you know that I that I've dwelled on but I think as long as you learn from those mistakes then that's fine how do you describe playing in England living just outside of London an incredible city and then you get to wake up every day and work your dream job yeah I mean um I'm very grateful to be here. I, I mean, it sucks that I'm away from my family. Um, yeah. But last year they they got to come over twice, which was which was really lovely. Um, and then this year they'll be coming, I think in March. Um, awesome. So I do really love when they can they can come and watch me because um, 
you know, I'm the baby, so <laughs> they yeah. got they got to do what they can. Yeah. But um, obviously, work and stuff gets in the way. And um, I think it's really nice um, as a person to kind of put yourself out of your comfort zone. I think that's how we grow. Mm -hmm. um, like like you said in Spain, um, that was a huge culture shock to me. Um, obviously, my dad's from Spain, and I I had been there before, but where I was wasn't the best environment environment for me. Um, and it was a huge culture shock. Um, and I think that put me out of my comfort zone and helped me learn about what I want in the future mm -hmm. as well as, um, you know, in terms of both football and in life. And I think it's really important to be in a, um, area that you like rather than just a football team that you like. Hmm. And you've mentioned comfort zone a few times now. What is your relationship with getting outside of your comfort zone and knowing the benefits that come with that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough, like to be able to push yourself out of your comfort zone and like be comfortable with that. Um, that's where we see the most most growth. Say if we we need to try something, it's kind of just being vulnerable and having an open yeah. mind to everything that you do. And not getting too caught up that like, oh, this isn't what I'm used to. And so I'm going to go back in my little shell. Like you need to push yourself out of your current boundaries because you, you never know. You might end up loving it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also to, to add on to this, I think there's the first step is obviously putting yourself in the situations or realizing when it is, but internalizing it too, to know like, like you said in Spain, knowing, okay, this is not really what I want, or this is the growth pattern. This is takes me to that place. How, what is your process in terms of like um, being present and having the ability to kind of see what's going right and what's going wrong and able to kind of fix it or, or, or work on it? Yeah. I think for me, like journaling helps a lot. And mm -hmm. um, like say if I've had either a bad session or a bad day, making sure I write everything out, um, how I feel. And also just talking to my friends, like getting other people's opinions. Um, especially some of like the um mentors in my life. I think that's um a great benefit to have. Um and I think, yeah, it's just taking not getting too caught up in taking things um one day at a time. Yeah. All right. So this this area i think even comes out more in goalkeeping because just even talking with goalkeepers and just thinking about the position there's a lot more pressure on one event there's a lot more weight on any one individual play it's much different from anything else that the the area in which you can make a mistake i guess can either hurt or help the team the most in that one incident so how do you kind of deal with this weight or is it something that you're able to block out most times during a game? Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's key. Um, it's almost being able to take a deep breath and, and still maintain that, that zone that you're in of mm -hmm. taking a deep breath, assessing the situation and not just reacting. So it's, it's a response rather than a reaction. Um, I forget what the the theory is, but there's like this thing where you're playing and it's uh, you're in like the zone mm -hmm. um, and it's basically where you're not thinking about anything you're just doing. And I think being able to to do that and not overthink things puts you in the best place to um, make the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, I think for a goalkeeper, obviously, like there's a lot that you can just go and run out at but maybe that's not the best decision maybe you need to set back and wait for the picture to change because mm -hmm. as you grow like you end up seeing kind of similar pictures and that's what helps you um make the right decision the next play maybe yeah and like i like i said I, i've made a few mistakes last year and this year i i've taken a, a, account of that and um make sure that I do my best not to make those same mistakes again. What are some ways you help yourself get into that zone? Um, 
I mean, it, it is hard. Like sometimes I do get a bit of anxiety in games because I, I want, I don't want to get scored on. I want to um do, I want, I want that clean sheet. I want to do the best I can, but it's not thinking. I think you can't think about those things. Mm. What you need to do is respond to what the game gives you mm. and be confident and brave in your decisions. And every every decision we make is probably not going to be the right one but as long as we can affect something and that we can push the people around us then that's some yeah and just like you said i think the mindset that you approach it with is so important and so key instead of having because we talk to a lot of players and and sean and i have have i've talked about this before too personally sometimes you have this fear of failure I think it's crucial to have the mindset that you're going in to make the play rather than I won't mess up. So have you kind of ever realized in situations of this relationship of going in either way and how it's kind of affected your game? Yeah, I think definitely as like when I was a bit younger um, I never wanted to make a mistake in training nor in games. Um, But like, look, we're going to, we're human. We're going to make errors but it's how we respond to those mistakes. Like in a game, if you make a mistake, you don't have time to dwell on it. Like you mm. could, be, they could be coming down your throats the next play. Um, Sometimes I, I think we can get caught up that if we have made a mistake, oh, we're like, oh, we're going to make a big play the next, the next one. But we can't do that because then that's putting so much pressure on us when in mm. reality, like we don't need to put pressure on ourselves. And because that's just going to make us uh, more prone to error. Yeah. And just like you said, when you have that, if you do make a mistake and you feel like you have to correct it, sometimes that can make you overplay. You're doing things too much. Maybe you're coming out on a cross that you usually wouldn't come out on and kind of you're putting your team in jeopardy there. So it's like this process, I think, is very difficult, and especially as a goalkeeper to, you know, realize after the moment something happens whether it's you know quote unquote a bad play to forget it and come back to center but also I think after the game is a crucial time too because you need to learn from it but you also can't dwell on it and I think you've you spoke a little bit about that has anything helped in terms of you analyzing the games and then being able to put it you know in the shelf put it away and not think about it again yeah um for me like watching your mistakes is hard right but it's yeah. something we have to do um and it's being able to learn and assess those situations like my goalkeeper coach always will do video with me and she'll always critique me but she'll also give me positive um positive clips as well um because mm-hmm. we don't want to just dwell on negatives or else your confidence um is just going to go down and down like we need to be able to see things we are doing well too um but for me what helps me like after games um we train the next day and I will always train and especially if if I've had um a bad game Mm. or made a mistake and I'm ready to get after it the next day no matter what because that's I know that's what's going to get me in a better headspace